He's tweeting yesterday, as ridiculous as it sounds, the laws of our country do not easily allow us to send those crossing our southern border back where they came from. A whole big wasted procedure must take place. Mexico and Canada have tough immigration laws, whereas ours are an Obama joke act Congress. This as the Department of Justice announces that they will begin imposing quotas on federal immigration judges in an attempt to speed up deportations. In that caravan group, Pueblo Sin Fronteras, which translates to People Without Borders, is responding, issuing this statement to Fox News, saying the U.S. president opportunistically invoked refugee caravans as a pretext for threatening immigrants already in the country, specifically DACA recipients. Trump is trying to turn Central American refugees and other immigrant communities against each other and use them as a bargaining chip with Mexico. Now, Mexico's ambassador to the U.S. is responding to the president's criticism. We certainly understand the concern not only that President Trump has, but people in the United States here have about immigration. What we're trying to do precisely is to work with the United States and Central Americans. And the president continued blaming Democrats on DACA after being asked about it at the annual White House Easter egg roll. The Democrats have really let them down. They've really let them down. They had this great opportunity. The Democrats have really let them down. It's a shame. And now people are taking advantage of DACA, and that's a shame. Several Democrats pushed back, in particular Senator Feinstein, tweeting that she's ready to get serious on DACA when the president is. Guys? Hmm, interesting. The conversation that continues. Thank you very much, Griff. All right, that caravan of illegal immigrants is now closing in on the U.S. border. If they claim to be seeking asylum, then legally they must be allowed in until their case can be heard. That has author and columnist Mark Stein asking, what's the point of a border in the first place? We're told we're on an orange alert. If, if, if law-abiding yeah. persons go to an American airport, they're barked at all the time. Be advised, the uh, security coding for today is such and such. And yet, at the same time, 1,100 people have announced they're just going to walk into the country, and the United States government throws up its hands and says, there's nothing we can do to stop them. <laughs> well, in that case, what the... What the hell is the point of Orange Alert? Why are 300 million law-abiding Americans shuffling shoeless through their airports like a bunch of, uh, like a bovine herd if any of the uh, six and a half billion people who aren't American around the planet can just walk across the Rio Grande uh, or take a flat, uh, flat bottom boat and, and walk into the country? All right, Russia showing off its military might with a new missile test of its so-called satellite killer. Now, the Russians claim uh, this can obliterate NATO spies in orbit and shoot down planes and even warheads. It comes hours after the Kremlin revealed President Trump invited President Putin to Washington during a phone call last month. The White House says it's still exploring venues. A D.C. meeting would be Putin's first, first since uh, 2005 when George, when George W. Bush was president. Jillian. President Trump again calling out the Department of Justice for being too slow, tweeting, quote, so sad that the Department of Justice and the FBI are slow walking or even not giving the unredacted documents requested by Congress, an embarrassment to our country. The president referring to subpoenas requesting documents related to the FBI's alleged surveillance abuses during the 2016 election. Former FBI Deputy Director Andrew McCabe no longer accepting online donations for his legal defense fund. But he does plan to use the 500000 raised since he was fired. This as his wife responds to criticism over campaign donations. Jill McCabe saying, quote, I want people to know that the whole story that everything is based on is just false and utterly absurd. The former state Senate candidate received a significant donation from then Virginia Governor Terry McAuliffe, a Hillary Clinton supporter. Some suggested it was an attempt to sway the FBI's investigation into Clinton's private email server. A car crash killing two people and at least three of their six adopted kids is now being investigated as a felony. The speedometer, which was pinned at 90 miles per hour, leads investigators to believe that the accident was intentional. 
Deputies are searching the family's Washington State home for any clues about uh, motives and possibly to find the three children still unaccounted. News exclusive. Good morning, Kelly. Jillian and Rob, good morning to you both. What would motivate anyone to forcibly remove a decorated 33 year Air Force veteran while participating in a retirement ceremony for a fellow Air Force member? Oscar Rodriguez clacking. <laughs> hey, Adam. Hey, guys. I'd really have to narrow it down if I wanted to find some real good news because there are still folks this morning that we're talking about dealing with winter like weather. Look at the northern plains. Temperatures down into the teens. In some cases, feels like single digits for some of those folks. When you see moisture running into that area, we're talking about snow happening once again. Unfortunately, these snow showers, these snowstorms are going to be lingering throughout today into the overnight hours. We can take a look at our future forecast and put this into motion for you. And as this moisture moves into the Great Lakes. It moves through Wisconsin. It moves into Michigan. That's going to be happening overnight tonight. This becomes a really heavy snowstorm. As a result, we're talking about areas with the uh, winter storm watches, winter storm warnings, stretching all the way from Montana, running into portions of Michigan. And it's this exact same system on the southern edge that's going to be producing perhaps some severe. Down 458 on the Dow. Uh, and it was a lot worse than that before it came back just a little bit before the close. So uh, trade concerns, tech stock fears, uh, sparking a sell-off on Wall Street, as you see here. We're going to talk about uh, the concern of a trade war uh, and uh, all this talk about China and the retaliatory tariffs on the U.S. Uh, on more than 100 products now after we leveled some tariffs on them for steel and aluminum. Here not to weigh in on that is the chair of the business and finance program at the King's College here in New York City, Brian Brenberg. Brian, thanks so much for coming on this morning. Yep. Yeah, we talk about, okay, now we've got this fruit and nut yeah. and uh, a couple other things. Uh, oh, the pork. The pork was frozen the big one. Pork, the frozen big pork. One. We sell a lot of that to, to China. Now there's a tariff on that, a pretty sizable one that's going to hurt our economy. This is a retaliatory tariff from China. What I can't figure out is it, it, it was never an even playing field to begin with. China always had this advantage. We were trying to level the playing field, and then they retaliate. Yeah. Well, look, yeah, they've had more protectionist measures right. in place than we have for sure. But you know that's going to happen if we're going to raise tariffs you know they're going to respond. That's just part of the negotiation, Rob. What's interesting here is they didn't go after the biggest products. Okay, if you look at the tariffs yeah. they could have levied, if they really wanted to inflict big harm, they would have gone after soybeans, they would have got, gone after aircraft and aerospace. They didn't do that. They levied only $3 billion in tariffs, which tells me they're not interested in a trade war. Right. They want to negotiate with the president, but they're not interested in a trade war, and so they're holding back here to try to create space for a deal. That's the big news. And, and maybe they see the fact and maybe they understand the fact that we it's, it's not fair and that we, we're just trying to level it off. So we're not going to hit back too hard, but we are going to let it be known that you can't just walk all over us. Well, the president has their yeah. attention. You know, we've talked for years about China's bad trade practices and the need to do something about it. For, you know, for better or for worse, yeah. you've got some cost here, but the president is doing something. He's going after China and saying, we want some change. We're going to put our money where our mouth is. We want a negotiation. But yeah. again, what's important to see here is the president is leaving room for a deal. It's clear he doesn't right. want to trade war. He simply wants China to come to the table and actually get some movement on things like intellectual property, which has right. eluded us for a very long time. You know, a lot of people say most people in politics only care about getting reelected. You saw the market drop, you know, almost 700 points at one point yesterday. It tanked yesterday. This is a tough thing to do if you're a politician because in the short term, you're going to get hit hard. There's going to be a lot of bad news to come from it. Is the president doing something that has needed to be done for a long time, which is correct some of these disparities between us and other countries? Well, especially on the yeah. intellectual property theft yeah. because that that truly is today the backbone of our economy right. intellectual property China is an abuser of those uh, properties we need them to respect it stop stealing property from the US so the president has decided to go after that and yet in the short term there's going to be some pain because so much of China's economy is built on getting that intellectual property from us it's interesting he's been willing to deal with that pain because remember last year he was touting stock market, stock market gains stock so much market, yeah. can't do that this year right. but if he can get this negotiation done quickly, then we can get back onto the glide path that tax cuts had us on. So that's the key here is to be tough, but get the negotiation done so businesses can get back to doing the things they want right. to do to grow. Right. Got to take the medicine. Brian, thank you so much for coming you on bet. this morning. Good My to see pleasure. you. All right. Jillian, over to you. Good stuff, guys. President Trump blasting Democrats for obstructing his cabinet nominations, tweeting overnight, quote, 39 percent of my nominations, including diplomats to foreign lands, have not been confirmed due to Democrats obstruction and delay. At this rate, it would take more than seven years before I am allowed to have these great people start working. Never happened before. Disgraceful. Former Deputy Chief of Staff Carl Rove says Democrats are doing it to gain an advantage. 
the Senate is going to be taken up with three nominations. You think that they're going to be able to approve a Secretary of State, a CIA director, and a Veterans uh, Administration yep. uh, Secretary quickly? No, Democrats are going no, to I use know. that to make the administration <laughs> believe. Currently, there are 131 nominations awaiting confirmation. The Golden State fight reaches new heights. The Trump administration now suing California over a law that aims to give the state power to override the sale of federal lands. The Justice Department says it is delaying land sales and decreasing its value. Democrats in the state, like the Attorney General Xavier Becerra, defend... And they're singing, too. Tens of thousands of teachers demanding higher wages and better classroom resources. The double demonstrations come on the heels of similar walkouts in West Virginia and Arizona. Students at one college can earn credit for attending a white privilege conference. The online course called Intersections of Privilege requires students to attend the annual conference, which is held in Michigan this year. University of Colorado at Colorado Springs professor Abby Ferber not only teaches the course, but is a co-organizer of the event. According to her faculty profile, she's widely recognized as a leading scholar of the far right. Okay. All right, on. Fox Business Alert. First, it was two major retailers, now a restaurant. Tracy Crosco from our sister network, Fox Business, here with what the latest company is suffering from a massive data breach. What company is this, Tracy? Yes. Good morning, guys. This is Panera Bread. Uh -oh. uh, Panera says that they have fixed the uh, website flaw, uh, the security flaw on their website that exposed the personal data of thousands of customers on the website who may have signed in or set up some sort of account. So they say that they've fixed that and that it was less than 10,000 customers. However, a cybersecurity blog says that it could actually be somewhere around 7 million people, their personal data exposed. We're talking names, email addresses, phone numbers, uh, the last four digits of their credit card numbers. Uh, so this is pretty big. Uh, we will see if anything happens. Panera says that the data wasn't accessed by anyone, but it was out there for anyone really to see. So as you said, another day, another data breach. Mm. You know, Panera good. has the soup thing where they put the soup into the bread bowl. The bread bowl. And then you can eat the bread bowl. It's so good, but it's so oh much I think it's just as important of a story as the data. <laughs> Uh, all right, let's talk about <laughs> Wi-Fi on school buses. Yeah, uh, transitioning there. Um, so Google says that they will be offering free Wi-Fi and Chromebooks on school buses uh, for rural school districts. It's about 70 buses in 16 districts across the country in Alabama, Georgia, Kansas, Minnesota, New Mexico, Oregon, Pennsylvania. Uh, so they will be giving these kids access to uh, the Chromebooks so they can do their homework, everything on the school bus. So they don't waste any time because hmm. a lot of them don't have access to high-speed internet at home. That's kind of cool. Yes, it is. It is. Cool. All yeah. right, Tracy, thank you. Thanks. All right, 26 minutes after the hour, a hiker plunging to his death on a popular tourist trail. The brand new warning for this vacation hotspot. We're going to win so much, you may even get tired of winning. And you'll say, please, please, it's too much winning. More winning. President Trump putting money back in your pocket, and Americans are. Saudi Arabia's crown prince making a dramatic shift in his kingdom's position on Israel. In an interview with The Atlantic, he says, quote, I believe the Palestinians and the Israelis have the right to have their own land, but we have to have a peace agreement to assure the stability for everyone and to have normal relations. The statement showing dramatic improvement in the ties between the two countries, who both see Iran as their biggest threat and the U.S. as a key ally. Well, a man plunges to his death while hiking a very dangerous trail on Easter Sunday. Nathan Stowell was reaching for his hat when he lost his footing and fell nearly 400 feet uh, below the popular trail off Mount Olamana in Hawaii. This is now the fourth death linked to that trail since 2011. Park officials say the Olamana Trail is a four and a half mile rocky path meant for experienced hikers. They now worry that people are risking their lives to get social media worthy snapshots. A Florida bridge collapse survivor is now telling his emotional story as he files a lawsuit against the companies involved in its construction. Richard Humble and his friend Alexa Duran were in their car when uh, Florida International University's brand new pedestrian bridge that wasn't even open yet came crashing down right on top of them. I heard it hit the top of the roof of the car and I heard it like buckle in and it kind of pushed me down. I looked back at Alexa a couple of times and uh, she wasn't saying anything and uh, I had like her blood on me and I didn't really like know what to do and she just wasn't moving.
Well, Humble says he also plans on suing FIU and the state of Florida. The affluenza teenager who claimed he was too rich to know right from wrong, walking free after nearly two years behind bars. Ethan Couch will now serve the remaining six years of his sentence under community supervision, which includes frequent drug and alcohol tests and wearing a GPS monitor. Couch was sentenced to rehab and probation after he killed four people while driving drunk at just 16 years old back in 2013. He was thrown in jail after violating that probation, then running away to Mexico with his mom. All right, students at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School in Parkland, Florida, returning to class, this time carrying mandatory clear backpacks. They were donated to the Florida school's 3,200 students free of charge. That moved part of an effort to strengthen security and make it more difficult for people to smuggle weapons onto campus. It comes after uh, uh, over a month after the massacre that killed 17 people at that school. Amazon stocks plummeting as President Trump ramps up his attacks on the retail giant. The president tweeting, quote, only fools or worse are saying that our money losing po Disney has since offered to refund the cost of the cruise, mm. but not a lot of magic on this one, guys. All right, Todd. Thank you. Okay. It is 35 minutes after the hour. Patriotism under attack. An American hero who fought for our freedom overseas. She's notably calling her Laugh Your Head Off tour. So with a name like that, you know she is not done talking about the president and the first family. And she recently told the New York Daily News, quote, I sent out a tweet the other day that was real honest, saying I didn't know.